Welcome to Startup Health Now, the weekly webcast that celebrates the healthcare transformers and change makers reimagining healthcare. My name is Unity Stokes, and today we're at Health 2 in Santa Clara, California, having a conversation with Leslie Bottorf. Leslie is Managing Director of Healthcare at GE Ventures. Today we're going to be digging into what it's like to be a VC in healthcare and discuss why we are at the end of the beginning. Stick around. It's going to be a great show. It is the duty of leaders to lead, of the creative to create, of the daring to do. The free world expects leadership of us. Its fate and our fate depends upon our leadership. We are industrious, inventive, restless, with the fires that burn within us. Well, I say that nothing is easy, and the best things are the heart. All our troubles, all our immense difficulties, now and in the future, can I say, be solved if we have the will, the courage. The future is to those who take it. Who take it. Who take it. All right, Leslie, it's great to be back with you. How are you? Great, great, a fun conference. Yeah, we're at Health 2 here in Santa Clara, and I thought we'd start out, I'd love to learn more about your background. Uh, maybe if you could share just how you got involved in healthcare, um, and then how you got involved in venture. Right. Well, you know, I have been in healthcare my entire career. I uh, inter- I um, majored in biomedical engineering in school at Purdue, and even during high school, had this idea that I wanted to build the Six Million Dollar Man, which Ooh. was a television show at the yeah, time. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> and um, a- and became interested in that, and so I went to Purdue, and um, so my career evolved from there. I actually went into sales and marketing after that. Uh, but of technical products, I felt that uh, my uh, expertise was more in uh, explaining technical processes uh, than in designing them So did you myself. start in the corporate side of things when you graduated? Uh, well, I actually was a salesperson. Okay. Um, General Electric at the time were, were hiring um, engineers to be salespeople and training us to sell all their CAT scanners, cardiac cath labs, and all of their very sophisticated imaging equipment. And so I sold, I carried a bag for four years and really loved it. It was a great job. And I uh, am just very interested in the uh, technology. And um, uh, so I left that for uh, a couple years to go get an MBA uh, because I was more interested in being on the marketing side than the sales side and uh, ended up coming out to the Silicon Valley and um, uh, working uh, in different sales and marketing roles for a, a series of startup companies. So fairly early on in my career, I catered to going with the startup companies and working with entrepreneurs. I went initially with uh, a company called Nelcor, okay. which is the company that put pulse oximeters on the map, if you might recall. We took it public while I was there. I was in marketing. And um, then another company called Minlo Care that was a spinoff of Raychem, a materials technology company that we sold to Johnson Johnson. And then uh, another one called Ventratex that was one of the early implantable defibrillator companies. And that was uh, eventually it went public and eventually became St. Jude's implantable defibrillator. So you were on, on the inside of all of those organizations. I was in various sales and marketing roles and, and basically – Um, uh, working on the positioning of those products and the initial commercial launch of all of those companies' products. And I love that. I got a great experience at a lot of different types of companies and different backgrounds, uh, different sub-segments, disease states, and um, then ended up actually going back to a large company. Uh, I went to Medtronic as a VP of sales and marketing of the cardiac ablation division, but it was a startup company they had bought. And they needed somebody who'd been in a startup company to come in and help them ramp up, uh, get ready for their launch and ramp up their product uh, when it got ready. So I did that launch, which was a startup within a very large corporation. And um, after we got that to where it was cash flow positive, uh, uh, Medtronic decided to uh, meld that in with some other divisions. And um, uh, I had done four startups essentially at that point and been in the growth phases and the positioning of all of those and um, ended up talking with some friends of mine who were in the venture business and uh, ended up going as a consultant to Onset Ventures, uh, a venture firm that does early stage medical device investing, which is what I've been doing my whole life. Right. So, um, uh, and really liked that a lot and ended up becoming a general partner with Onset Ventures. Was it a big shift to go from building companies to then 
the venture side and, and be on the other side and in investing in, in new startups? It was in that um, it, it, when you're an entrepreneur and on the operating side of the business, you are the doer. You are the one that you know thinks of all this stuff and implements it. And as a as a um, as a venture capitalist, we are not in that position. We are there to help the entrepreneurs and advise them. And um, so you're a, an advisor in that way. But if you're an early stage um, uh, venture investor, you can really get involved in supporting and helping um, the entrepreneurs in a lot of ways. And one of them is their network. Another is helping them sort of hash out strategy, being a sounding board for them. And um, so you can do a lot of things. So in that way, there's a lot of similarities. But uh, it, it's, a, it's definitely a different role. So you're now with the GE Ventures Healthcare Group. Uh, and, and leading that up, um, there's an interesting trend going on with with corporate venture arms investing, um, doing a lot of investing today, mm-hmm. and also at the early stage. I'd, I'd love for you to maybe talk about GE Ventures strategy and and maybe the the healthcare strategy as well. Right. Okay. Well, so um, uh, GE has been investing as a, as a venture uh, investor for a while now, a good number of years now, uh, and Prior to about three to four years ago, though, they were doing that half out of the division, uh, the given uh, uh, operating division, and half out of um, the uh, GE Capital, GE Capital Private Equity uh, Group. And and that um, became difficult for two different entities to really, um, you know, quickly prosecute the investments and therefore to really be able to be as involved as they'd like to. And so um, uh, the leadership of GE, uh, Jeff Emmelt and and Beth Comstock decided, you know, that's not really working for what we want. Because uh, what GE wants out of this is, um, even though we're a very large, successful company, um, we we are constantly needing to reinvent ourselves and to bring innovation and people who are innovators into uh, either into the company or into a position that we could we could partner with them, we could learn from them, um, and and uh, we can have a synergy together. And um, uh, the days are gone, I think, when one company has to own the end-to-end solution. Uh, there are, you know, more and more what we see in healthcare, certainly, and even in some other verticals of GE, is that that you need to deliver an overall solution, an overall uh, product um, uh, solution to the customers, rather than just here's my widget, mm-hmm. in one way or another. And so um, we can't do that by ourselves. We need to be uh, figuring out innovative ways to partner with uh, uh, startup companies that are more agile and can move quicker than a large company and um, uh, uh, make it a win-win for everybody. And, and so that's really what GE Ventures is about. You know, I, th- I think it's, it's really interesting um, that there's initiatives to focus with early stage startups, mm-hmm. um, which is pretty unique. I think um, according to the Startup Health Insights, GE Ventures is now one of the most active, if not the most active this year for corporate venture in terms of healthcare at the early stage. Um, what is the the thinking there? Why is it important to also focus, even as a large venture group and large corporation, to be focusing at the earliest stages where sometimes the startups are don't even know their business model yet, or they're just figuring out um, what they're doing. Well, and we are partnered with Startup Health for that very reason, that we really need to be involved in that process. Because the fact is that, and in our vertical, certainly in healthcare, the entire healthcare system is being disrupted. And that's in the United States, and it's also happening globally. And um, and so that's no doubt going to disrupt a lot of the, uh, the current players' business over time. Uh, and um, also provide incredible opportunity. And my, one of the things that I've learned in the venture business is whenever there is disruption, there is opportunity. Mm-hmm. And we want to be on the front end to help, you know, help uh, entrepreneurs shape how that happens and, you know, and, and uh, uh, partner with them to make it happen. And we want to be a part of that whole process. Uh, so we need to see, you know, the, the quote from Wayne Gretzky was, I don't need to see where the puck is. I need to see where it's going. We need to see where, where the new business models and the, and the new technology plays are going. And we need to be a part of it and figure out how we can benefit from, with our business by uh, helping these entrepreneurs with their business. One of the questions I think a lot of startups often ask is, 
sh should we partner with a with a corporate partner, a corporate venture? On what are some of the benefits of um, now that capital itself has become such a commodity? Um, what are some of the benefits of really partnering with an organization like GE Ventures um, if you're a startup today? Yes, uh, and I've been in the venture business for over 17 years now, and it, it always was that you don't really take the corporates right away. But I think that's looking at it from a little bit d different angle than what certainly what GE Ventures is doing. Um, it used to be that the the, um, the uh, corporates would only invest in things they wanted to buy in you know one to three years, and um, and they bought you or not, and it could taint you if they didn't buy you. Uh, but it was it was very much a an extension of business development. And so the idea um, that GE Ventures has is that there might be some of that. We might invest in some companies that we end up buying. Certainly there is optionality, but that will be a small percentage of the overall uh, picture. Mm. Uh, a lot of these other companies we will end up partnering with in one way or another. And um, so it's important to us to be able to uh, get in on the earlier stages of how they're, they're developing their business models so that we can, in fact, do that. And we can help them bring it forward. We can help them scale. Uh, we're in 170 countries. There's no better company out there at scaling businesses in GE. And so we feel like that it's important we will be investing across all stages, but particularly to keep our hand in working with these entrepreneurs on the early stage so we can help you know, make some of those things happen and give them options. And, and so um, therefore, and we're open to, to, um, to uh, um, investing with other VCs and also with other corporates. We're okay with that. So if you, if you invest in a company, it's not like they couldn't go get a customer that might be in a similar line of business as you. Um, what, what are the rules of engagement on something like that? Or right. is it a case by case? No, basis. I mean, usually we don't have uh, uh, any uh, ties at, at all. There might be, if they had a tie to GE, it would be with the business unit, not with the Jet Ventures I people. See. And that would be, you know, that company's choice to do that and, and our business unit's choice. So we don't require any particular ties to invest in, you know, uh, to invest from GE Ventures. Um, and so they're, uh, they're free to do, you know, to, to take other investors. And... Um, um, so that should not be a constraint for working with GE. Yeah. One of the things, it's been really um, great to see GE Ventures grow over the last few years and, and really establish such a great presence um, on the West Coast and really around the world. What are, what are some of the innovations that you are looking for today, that you care about today, specifically on the healthcare side of things? Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, um, we think that this whole area of digital health is just tremendously exciting. And there are going to be a lot of, of good companies that come out of that and a lot of exciting things for how healthcare is, um, the direction of healthcare and how it's going to be deployed. Uh, one of the areas we think is, uh, is a lot of activity right now, but it has a lot of um, uh, ways to go, is uh, virtual health. And when we say virtual health, that could be a lot of different types of modalities and, and ways of, of um, delivering care. But uh, it's not just telemedicine. It's not just the old-fashioned, you know, on the phone, we're going to have a doctor talk to uh, a patient. That's not it. Uh, it it's, uh, that, that could be part of it, but it's using the entire breadth of, of what's available to us on the Internet and data analytics and, um, uh, uh, you know, many other techniques, patient engagement techniques, mm -hmm. behavioral techniques to affect the best solution in the end. And, and we just think that there is a lot of opportunity there for, uh, for um, uh, uh, innovation and, and better care models. Um, another area that we are interested in is, um, uh, would be taking the middleman, let's call it that, out of a lot of the administrative things that happen to happen with, with healthcare and a lot of logistics that have to happen. Uh, there's a lot of money spent on that. And, and that's uh, and what the Ubers of the world have done so well in, in other, you know, for transportation, for example. Exactly, exactly. And that includes everything from payments and how you, and risk coding and how you even get paid and how the transaction happen, all the way to many clinical uh, processes and referral patterns and just every aspect of healthcare. And so uh, we think that there's tremendous potential there as well. We think there's great potential in uh, analytics 
And one thing I would say about analytics is we've had a tremendous amount of entrepreneurs come to us just in the last couple of years and say, you know, here, I've got these data scientists here in the Silicon Valley, and we're going to tell you, you know, everything about who's going to live or die of cancer. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, do you, you know, what's your medical uh, backing in terms of who you have working with you and um, your clinical uh, data? And it's like, oh, my God, we don't have any clinical data or anything like that. And, and I think that's that's not a model at least the GE is going to be investing in. I mean, it, because that's not a model, I think, that flies with the healthcare business as a not as a wellness platform, but as a we're going to deliver care to patients who need it, the chronic diseases and that kind of thing. I mean, what we're looking for are people who have, have gone and gotten, used their analytics to to give new insights, to give new information about a particular clinical situation or a particular diagnosis or 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 whatever it is um, and and I'll say personal medicine but that oftentimes you know a lot of people think that's just genomics and not just genomics it's every piece of information that is about that patient that can be uh, give a useful insight and so we're really interested in companies that are doing that and that are following up with clinical data on 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 their analytics uh, and or their um, uh, uh, their their uh, uh, decision support tool, uh, and we just think that there's huge potential for that. We have a number of companies that are are uh, pursuing that area. Are you excited about the pace of innovation that you're seeing, having seen so many different things in healthcare over the years? Are you surprised by how fast things are moving, say, with digital health, precision medicine you mentioned, mm -hmm. um, virtual health as you talked about? Mm -hmm. Is it getting to where it needs to be or are we just at the earliest of stages and we can't even imagine where it, it's going to go? What's your view on maybe where it's going? Oh, I think it's the uh, – I would call it like Churchill. I would call it the end of the beginning. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, not the beginning of the end, but the end of the beginning. You know, uh, I, I think that there's huge amounts of things that are that are you know going to evolve out of this for um, changing the way we deliver healthcare. Uh, and, and there's a lot of activity right now. We've made a great start, um, but there's a long uh, a long uh, way to go with it. And um, I think that it's not surprise. It, it's it, the, the pace is fantastic, but many of these things, is, which is great, are are things that are not. You know, physical. You don't have to prove out a physical um, clinical result over. And some of it's the business models where the innovation is coming from. Exactly. A lot of it's the business models that can make a big difference in how a patient's treated, uh, uh, how how efficacious it is, and how much it costs. And cost is really a problem in our system today. And so, so I, it doesn't surprise me that that can go faster. But in the end of the day. Even companies who are doing decision support and that kind of thing still need to back what they're doing up with some some data, and so what you're seeing in in the um, in the in the uh, digital health area is that the consumer plays can come forward the quickest, like the Fitbits, where the Fitbits they where go, they don't have they go to have public a lot of data. in a few years. Yeah. yeah, it's a it's a it's a consumer appeal, and, that, and it's got its own challenges, but nevertheless, um, uh, it, it can go faster. Uh, because it doesn't have to have interoperability. It doesn't have to worry about reimbursement. It's a self-pay model. So it doesn't have some of the things that are harder about um, uh, really delivering medical care to people who have chronic diseases. Um, those are going to take a, those models will take a bit longer. The other ones that can happen quickly, and you see a lot of this, are the ones that are about um, the operations of the healthcare system itself. And that's not so much clinical. It's more you need to go get the economic data of how does this system work and, and save the insurers uh, money. And that's an important proof point, but it's different than a clinical trial. And then, but I think you'll also see coming forward all these things that make a difference in actual clinical practice of medicine. Mm. And that will take longer. It's got to go through, you know, more regulatory scrutiny, more clinical uh, um, information and trials, uh, more economic scrutiny and, and reimbursement. But it's tremendously exciting. And that's moving fast also. So for, for an organization such as yours that has these very large, important um, businesses um, in healthcare, Mm -hmm. And there's these new threats of disruptors or innovators maybe coming in that that could displace some of those legacy businesses or established businesses. Um, how how does an organization like yours 
think about that is is it is there an opportunity to own or invest in those new emerging ones or try to sort of maintain the the success of the current business as long as possible it's this const this this innovator's dilemma mm-hmm. uh, strategy yeah mm-hmm. well we certainly want to uh, maintain our businesses as, as long as possible but we, it's, it's a losing strategy for uh, us or any other big company to say oh you know I'll just try to keep those guys down and it won't happen you know if it's a better way to serve the customer and to deliver the care in a cheaper way it's gonna it's gonna um, uh, happen, and so we would rather really be a part of you know how can that play in? I mean, we'd rather be a part of disrupting ourselves than somebody else do it for us. Right. I guess that's the bottom line, and yeah. so that's why you know we're we're working with these startup companies and try to figure out you know we we could do it if we can do it better. Let's figure out what it is and how we do it because it's just a loser strategy just to say I'm gonna like. You know, try to keep everybody else down and just not do anything different. I, I think that, um, you know, that that's not going to work for anybody. You guys have been very progressive, I think, with focusing on external innovation and partnering and collaborating on external innovation. What would your advice be maybe to other large organizations, maybe even in other industries um, or parts of health or healthcare? Maybe they're a consumer company. Mm-hmm. Um, in terms of that strategy of of going very early and focusing externally. Mm -hmm. What would your advice to maybe other large companies? Mm Because it can be quite challenging, I think, for a large organization and a a smaller organizations to to pair up effectively. Right, right. I mean, and and that's one of the reasons that we have a venture business, that that this is a, um, as venture capitalists uh, and a venture investor, we can uh, work with those companies more effectively without getting in their way and slowing them down. Because we don't want to do that, and that's hard for a, 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 a large company that can't move on a dime. Uh, and, and there are many constituencies, many uh, you know regulatory things they need to worry about. Um, they're focused on their own business at the moment, and so um, this is a you know an organizationally a way that we can uh, work with these companies and have that happen over time. And so to you know other corporations, I would say, you know, one way or another you're going to need to embrace some of these changes that are happening to the industry. And so each corporation is going to have to figure out how can we do that, what works for us, mm. uh, without disrupting you know, our current business and, and um, uh, you know, making that slow down or without slowing down the entrepreneurs. So, um, and, and it's not easy. It's not easy for a very large organization to work with some, uh, an organization that's really different from them and their needs are really different and their speed is different. Um, I think that's one of the the reasons our partnership's been so um, effective over the last few years is GE brings the ability to really help scale, and we're very used to nurturing these companies at the very earliest stages, and it just seems to be a perfect marriage of, of bringing those two forces together. So I, it's, it's been great, and we're looking forward to working on this next group of companies on around payment solutions and, and virtual health. I think we're going to start to see some really interesting ideas and companies emerge from that uh, collaboration. And we're very excited about it also. We, we've, we've had a great partnership with Startup Health, and you guys have done a great job with the the uh, companies that we worked uh, with you on so far, and that's uh, what made us want to do some more. And uh, we think that uh, we bring um, our own unique set of, of, of skill sets to the, the party that are different from yours, and they're very complementary. Yeah. And so we, we really think that we can help these companies in yes. a big way. And, and it won't happen on the first day. Things have to evolve over time, but um, we think we can help them, and we think they'll help us. Right. So that's why we're doing this. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Well, thank you so much for your time and your your collaboration and partnership. It's wonderful to to work with you on transforming healthcare. Thank you so much. Wonderful to be here. Thank you.